Yo, what's going on? So in this little kind of diamond in the rough, it was this article. Charlie Hunnan had very awkward meeting with George Lucas to play Anakin Skywalker, walked out knowing I'm definitely not getting the role. So I read a little bit of it, and then it started to talk about Anakin. And there's a quote from Anakin about <laughs> him talking about George and playing uh, Anakin, or actually from Hayden, and him playing Anakin uh, in the future and potentially playing more of Anakin, which we can talk about. So very short and sweet. When it came to returning as Anakin Skywalker, Hayden Christensen, obviously, now with Disney, didn't have George Lucas anymore. So here's what he had to say about it. He said, I felt like I was cheating on him a little bit, cheating on George. Christensen recently told Entertainment Weekly about playing Anakin without Lucas by his side. But it's a different time for Star Wars now, and I think it's really exciting that we now have this period where there are other storytellers coming in and giving their take on the universe. But, of course, it all goes back to the maker. George Lucas is very much in the front of everyone's mind when we're making a decision, and we want to make stuff that he would be happy with, for sure. So, definitely, I understand that, you know, Hayden had George from the very beginning, you know, from episode two into episode three, and George was like a hawk on Hayden. You know, he was the chosen one. He is the main character of Star Wars. He is literally the reason Star Wars exists, Anakin Skywalker. Of course, George, but Anakin Skywalker is the main character. And so George was very, very close with Hayden on set, at least from what I've read and seen with behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, from talking with Nick Gillard, who I'm going to go visit in like three weeks. So that'll be fun. That'll be cool. Um, yeah. But anyways, I, I truly do feel for Hayden because it's like it's probably weird now that you have these different people telling the stories that George created. And it's completely throwing him off of his element because it's like, he probably has fundamental ideas of what Anakin would do, Vader would do, things he would say or not say. But at the same time, he now is, a, you know, he's an actor. He has to do kind of what's in the script. I would hope that Dave Filoni and whoever else would be creating Anakin from here on in would be open and receptive to what Hayden has to say regarding the character. Because I truly do think, while yes, he is an actor, but I think Hayden knows Anakin just as good as George. You know, just as good as Dave Filoni. And I think that they, you know, whoever is directing him needs to really take that into consideration. Christensen said he would love to get to do more projects as Anakin, adding, I don't know what the future holds, and if such an opportunity presents itself, I'll be there with a big smile on my face. And if it doesn't, I feel really grateful for getting to come back and getting to do the work that I did in both Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. And um, yeah, I mean, personally, I don't think he's done. I think, you know, Anakin for Disney is probably a massive... Oh, thank you for the subscription. I think An Anakin is one of the biggest sales and sells for Disney. And, you know, they love their money. So <laughs> when it comes to that, I'm sure that they have a checkbox to put Anakin in there into as many projects as they can. But then it's up to Dave Filoni to kind of see where Anakin would fit. And with flashbacks, I mean, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want. And now also that we have seen Anakin in the flesh in Ahsoka as that ghost, you know, watching over her and she's receptive of it. I think a perfect example of him now being able to show up at any moment in time to Luke Skywalker. And I think that is probably the next one that they're holding out on that they haven't shown us yet that we're going to see. And I know Star Wars is very slow right now, but in the next couple of years, I truly think that we're going to see maybe a different level of Star Wars because they know, I at least hope they know where they have missed the mark and with dave's new powers <laughs> i really I do have hope that he will drive it in the right direction hopefully so that's yeah, pretty cool you know I, I totally understand that hayden would feel you know he's cheating on george a little bit and i feel like you know we all are even talking about star wars of cheating on george a little bit because that they didn't do what he wanted to do they didn't go on his whole idea of the sequel trilogy they didn't adhere to his rules when it came to Star Wars. But I do feel like they are somewhat learning from their mistakes. And when I say they, I mean Dave Filoni. I've lost trust in any of the Disney executives in this and that. I don't think they can tell their head from, you know, whatever. So it's really up to guys like Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor to kind of instill a bit of what they think is really, you know, what's up with these characters to Dave Filoni, to John Favreau, to, well, I don't really think Deborah Chow really knew all that much about Star Wars or the characters in general, but that's a lost cause. That's done. It's finished. I hope we move on from that. But going forwards, I really do think that Anakin will show up much more in the Star Wars universe. Ahsoka season two, definitely. And then the probably Heir to the Empire movie that Dave is developing and figuring out. So a lot more Anakin to come for sure. It's, 
this is not the end for you, my master. This is there's tons more. Oh, even more information uh, from another article. So literally, what I was just talking about, Entertainment Weekly. You have some ownership of this character, obviously. So were there ever times with Dave Filoni on Ahsoka or with Deborah Chow on Obi Wan Kenobi where something didn't track for you and you wanted to talk it out with them? And Hayden Christensen says, honestly, I was always following their lead. Both of them are such smart storytellers; they really know what they're doing. And on this one, working with Dave Filoni, it was such an inspiring experience because he knows the world so well, and it's all from his time spent with George Lucas. And you get a sense of that. It felt like there was this proverbial torch that had been passed down. And so every day on set with Dave was really exciting, and it was inspiring. Not just for me, but for everyone. You can see the effect that he has on the rest of the cast and the crew, and that's a big deal that counts for a lot. What was it like doing these two Star Wars projects without George Lucas. At first, it felt like I was cheating on him a little bit. Okay, so he's getting into exactly what it is now. And I think it's really exciting that we now have this period where there are other storytellers coming in and giving their take on the universe. But of course, it all goes back to the maker and George Lucas is very much in the forefront of everyone's mind when we're making a decision and we want to make stuff that he would be happy with for sure. And I hope that's the case. But as for, you know, even Entertainment Weekly is aware that Hayden does have some ownership in this character for sure. And, you know, I, I really do think the conversations that Hayden and George had regarding Anakin Skywalker, you know, if we were a fly on the wall, we would probably learn so many new things about what Hayden was, or what Anakin was like, and, you know, what, where his character was going to go, possible fan fictions that George had in his mind. Would love to have been a fly on the wall with those discussions. Did you at least know that this time that you were going to be a Force ghost at the end of Ahsoka as opposed to Return of the Jedi when that was a surprise? Was that a surprise to you? Yes, they told me this time and I got to know what I was shooting when I was shooting it. Good. How is it different being part of this massive pop culture juggernaut in your 40s as opposed to being a teenager when you first signed on? How has your perspective in that regard changed with time and age? Every day you get to go to work on a Star Wars project, it's really thrilling and that's never lost on me. When I was doing the prequels every day I was there, I was very aware of how fortunate I was. And the same is true now. I think as I've gotten a bit older, I have perhaps a greater appreciation and more of an awareness of the impact of these stories and what they mean to so many people. And so that, if anything, elevates the stakes even more. But honestly, every time I've gotten to swing a lightsaber, it's been a good day. What's it like when you go back and watch yourself for... This is a cool interview, man. I've never read this one. I've done it a few times now in preparation for those last couple projects. And it's certainly a heavy dose of nostalgia. And you're sort of transported back to that time in your life and when we were making those films. But I look back fondly on those films and the work that we did. Anytime I watch a performance of mine, it's hard not to be self-critical. And I wish I had made this decision versus that decision. And that's always going to be the case. But those films have aged well, in my opinion. And I'm very proud of those films. So it has just been really nice to get to come back and do more with the characters that has meant so much to me and that I really care about that. And that has had such a significant impact on my life. Even after the Kenobi series, there's almost a decade of unfilled blanks there before A New Hope. Would you be open to filling those blanks in playing Darth Vader? Okay. I would love to get to do so, and I'd love to get to continue with Star Wars, and we'll see. I don't know what the future holds and if such an opportunity presents itself. I'll be there with a big smile on my face, and if it doesn't, I feel really grateful for getting to come back and getting... Okay, so pretty much kind of the... There's much more if you guys want to check it out. I guess maybe no, that's the end. <laughs> but yeah, look, I think it's pretty sweet that Hayden is getting all this love and appreciation and being interviewed all this much for all the, the Star Wars stuff. And this was a pretty actually good interview because they were asking some questions that you don't see too much. It's like you have ownership of this character. So were there ever times with Dave Filoni or Ahsoka for Ahsoka or Deborah Chow and Obi-Wan where something didn't track? Because that's so true. It's, you know, it's not George anymore. And, and it's kind of cool that Entertainment Weekly even notices that, that there may be discrepancies between these new writers and directors versus freaking Hayden, who like knows the character better than anybody, right? So it's like Mark Hamill knows the character of Luke better than anybody, better than Ryan Johnson. So we kind of have to respect what these characters have learned from George Lucas when it came to playing the characters, because no one is going to have a better understanding than these guys themselves because they are portraying the character. Right? They were chosen to play the character. They were chosen to be the chosen ones. So pretty pressing interview. Pretty cool. Pretty cool answer from Hayden. Very kind words, as always. And I hope Dave always really, truly does have George in mind. And I, I think he does. And I hope that he's not 
ever going to be kind of uh, changed or warped or anything by Disney or whatever it might be. And I hope that just going forward, it's going to be very organic and just what we want it to be. So let me know what you think. Have a great day and may the force be with you always.